Are you thinking about doing some big scale 3D printing? Well, today, join me as we unbox and put together the CR10 Max, an 18 by 18 inch build plate, guys. Let's build this sucker. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said in the intro, the CR10 Max. So this is the second Creality printer that I'm adding to my workforce. And I'm really excited about this one because this one goes up to a larger scale than even my original CR10s or my CR10 V2s. So the CR10s, we get about a 12 inch by 12 inch build plate. This guy, we're about an 18 inch by 18 inch build plate. And I don't even know the height right off the top of my head. So this gives a lot of expansion on how what I can print as a solid piece uh, just by size wise so if I wanted to print a piece of chest armor for example a lot of times with the uh, CR10s I'd either have to do it completely on an angle to try to get the most out of my build plate or I'd have to cut it in pieces and print it in separate parts and assemble it not so much with this guy so we have a huge print area we have this box is just huge um, and it's heavy. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you knew this one was coming. Um, so unlike the CR30 print mill, this guy is a standard standard format 3D printer um, printing up directly upward. So, But I'm really curious about this because there's a lot of capability that you can do with this big printer with vases, uh, flower pots. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to use it for more armor, models, different things like that. Helmets, um, being able to just fabricate them in one piece is kind of something that's can be very tricky. It's sometimes easier to do them in smaller parts and put them together, but it's just cool printing it in big piece and also just getting larger prints, um, which is what I was after with this machine. So, um, so we're going to do the same as we did with the CR30. We're going to get it out of the box. We're going to put it together. We're going to do a first impression, and then then I'm going to use it for a couple weeks and give you a second video on setting up your Cura profile and getting all that stuff together. But today is just getting it put together and getting our first impression. So let's get it out of the box. Okay, guys, we're going to try to get this thing out of the box and on the tail. I don't know if I can do this by myself. So um, I've got another camera over here recording what's down in the box. First thing is, please do not move the nozzle and hot end quickly during power on running. Uh, prevent, prevent to automatic shut down electric, electricity current. Uh, there's some misspellings in there, but okay. So we're going to set that to the side. And when I first look at this, I mean, look at the size of this build plate, my hand. I mean, that is just massive. So this thing is huge. And I've got the stabilization bars. I'm going to keep them. Well, actually, there should only be the two, two sets. So we got stabilization bars. I'm going to set them down to the side. And now I'm hoping this is in two pieces. I'm going to actually kind of be scared if it's not, because that's going to make things a lot harder. This should be the base of the printer. So, uh, and it's not <laughs> my fear. Uh, uh, okay, because it's the power box. Okay, so I am going to lift both these out at the same time. Oh. This thing it doesn't even fit on my table. It's so massive. You got the power box. This is the base frame. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this thing is just huge. Okay, we're gonna leave that there for a minute. Assuming this is the goodie box. Oh wow! For a test spool of filament, 
That's a pretty good amount of filling. That's probably 500 kg. That's a surprise. Uh, not an unwelcome one either. Um, then we got the tool kit. Got the SD card. Uh, more braces, brackets, spool holder, USB cable included, power cord, and the bolts, putty knife. And we got the instruction book. Okay. Alright, I think this is the last piece. <laughs> because of course we gotta have the frame oh, with the hot end and the Z rods. Oh. Alright. I've got it upside down at the moment. Oh, I'll be gentle here. So there's our top frame, our hot end, our cabling. Dual Z-Rod, which is definitely a requirement. Uh, a good extruder, a filament switch, and all our cabling parts. So I'm gonna take a look at the instructions and we're gonna move into the next dot, next spot of getting this guy assembled. So we'll see you guys in assembly. All right, guys, so assembly. Oh, boy. <laughs> so you can see this thing is math. It doesn't even fit on my table. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how I'm really going to do this. So, but we're going to get it put together. Now, the first thing it says to do is put the bars together, but I'm going to leave that step till the end. I'm going to get this base frame put together first. Because um, this thing is just unwieldy, massive. So this is the pull rods that we'll get to. Um, this is the T-Block, and this is the M545s, so of course, in any time you're putting together a 3D printer, read the book. Um, the book can be very helpful in getting stuff done. So, but like I said, the first thing they want you to do is put these rods together. I'm not doing that at the moment. I'm jumping to here because I want to get this frame secured. Um, and they show assembly in five steps. So let's get this base done. Okay guys, so I got the T-frame on. You can see this thing is massive. I mean, this is my hip and this thing is almost up to the top of my forehead. I mean, it's it's a huge build area. <laughs> I may have overestimated the size on this one. So, uh, you guys can see, I mean, this is a massive printer. It definitely changes the name of the game in my print shop. So I can't even get it all on the camera. Um, it's that big. So um, I'm really excited about it, but ooh doggy, this guy is gonna be a bear uh, to work with um, and get it situated in the shop. And leveling has me kind of horrified a little bit. So I'm kind of hoping it's re actually pretty easy. So I'm liking the frame build here it looks like I could easily make something to uh, hold my gauge while I gauge level, which is my preferred way of leveling beds. So, all in all, it's a CR-10 mixed with the CR, um, was it the Ender-6 or CR-6 uh, mainboard. I like that the mainboard is attached to this. And I'm not having to find extra room for a, a control box like I do the CR-10. So, that's actually really cool. But this thing is massive. 
So I'm gonna get the bracer rods on. I'm gonna do that off camera. Um, if you guys are curious about that, I can do a video of that because I added those to my CR-10. So I'm gonna hop in and do that, get those on here, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, I have it all put together. Um, of course, you have the wiring, goes into a nice ribbon cable connection here on the side. I had to plug in the cords back here that just go into the Z motors because they were detached. Um, this brings the extruder and all that stuff on in con into connection here. So essentially, we're assembled. Might be a little bit more tightening. So just my first overall impression before I power this on. This is huge. <laughs> this is massive. Um, I definitely underestimated what I was getting myself into here. I see the power switch. I'm looking just to be on the safe side for a power toggle and I don't see one. So hopefully we won't have a problem. But let's take the next step here and let's get that power cord in and see what, how this baby purrs. Already hearing some clicking, some moving. CR10 Max, color display, great improvement. Um, that was one of my things with. And we play music. That's new. So we're already up at our main screen. We've got our three settings. We're touchscreen. So this is one of the things I felt that failed on the CR10 V2, V3, and somewhat on the Ender 3 V2. Um, there was a great opportunity, especially with the CR10 V2 and V3, to do this. And it was just left with the original CR10 screen, which I felt was a very big fallback. The Ender 3 V2, granted we got the color screen, but we didn't get a touch screen. Um, touch screen, a lot of printers are coming out with just the touch screen now. We don't have the knobs or any of that. Now that's good and it's bad, but touch screens just tend to work and we're not working with resin, so touch screen is great. Um, for this because it's not going to get that dirty. I love that I have a volume setting so I can turn down my Turn it down because I don't want a lot of sound um, We've got leveling we've been able to disable the motors um, Just that was just the setting temperatures. I can go through and set ABS or PLA um, I don't have a card in right now SD card. I don't have anything in so nothing there so and Honestly, I'm very impressed by the quietness of this printer. Um, usually, I expected this thing to roar um, when I turned it on. In all honesty, I hear, I hear the hot end, and I hear the power supply fan. That's it. And they're not even that loud, which is great. Because usually, those are what bug me on a 3D printer, is they're loud. So overall, I mean, just to size this, guys, this is my, I mean, it's at my belt. And it's pretty much the size of my entire upper body. This thing is going to be massive of what I can print. One of the other things that I could be a downfall for the printer, and I'm probably going to wind up looking for one, is it's a matte plate. It's not a glass plate. Um, I like printing on glass myself personally, but um, I also get the size <laughs> um, being a drawback to that. So um, it's kind of one of those things, all in all. It's a gorgeous looking machine, doesn't sound bad. I'm gonna have to do some structural stuff here to get this to actually stay up. Um, so I'll have to do some bending with that to get it upright. And actually I'm gonna peek here real quick. And we've got the newer hot end, which is awesome. Um, so we've got the similar hot end. And actually this has auto bed leveling already in it. So I'm gonna have to play with that too and learn that one. So I've got to build a profile and cure for this. So make sure you check back for the second video where we actually level it print with it and get started with this printer so and my actual true review this is the first like hour i've actually had this printer assembly not bad at all i i was assembled in about 30 35 minutes i did do it by myself um you guys kind of saw how it was going around these guys went on easily i got a little bit of tightening in the nuts to do on this but, um, and one of the things that I was impressed with was the additional support T supports that were put on each side for the gantry to make sure it stays on there, it's strong, and it doesn't get a wobble or a vibration into it. So that was a really good thing that they added. Um, I will probably take the filament holder off 
Um, you guys see the carriages that I tend to use and feed it through. So I probably will switch to that, but filament holder is just your standard Creality filament holder. But, oh my goodness, this thing is huge. So let's see what trouble we can get into it. So check back in a couple weeks, guys, and see what trouble I got myself into with this printer. Thank you, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, make sure you join the crew and see more cool stuff like this on the channel. See the prints that we put out here. If you've got any questions about 3D printing this printer or another printer or anything like that, comments down below, let me know. I'll see if I can help you out. So thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next video.